you guys uh, for speaking. It was really nice and really interesting. Uh, so today we will talk about uh, space debris and uh, we have uh, two um, opinions on this problem. Uh, you guys think that it is all bad today and uh, we uh, would nice to, um, uh, sorry, um, sorry, a little bit, bit uh, nervous and um, we say about uh, how we can keep with uh, the, uh, these problems. Uh, so. mm -hmm. Everything that people launch into space will ultimately end up like the shattered satellite. As long as an object leaves Earth's atmosphere, it will stay in orbit for thousands or even millions of years. Eventually, a month or a millennium after launch, it will hit one of the millions of other objects orbiting Earth. That collision will generate new fragments which will go around the planet until the two are involved in collisions. Over time, everything in Earth's orbit will be ground into celestial scrap. Today, the risk of such disaster is relatively low. Though Mir, the Russian space station launched in 1986, has been hit by an object large enough to dent the inner wall of the crew compartment. But the International Space Station, much larger than Mir, will be an easier target for debris. Each decade that is in orbit, according to a recent study, the station will have about 20% chance of undergoing a critical penetration that could kill a crew member or destroy the station, and the chances will increase as more objects are launched into space. After just 40 years in space, we have seriously polluted the final frontier. Valuable orbits are peppered with debris that threatens the operation of satellites and the lives of astronauts. Some experts have been concerned about this problem for years and have slowly gained the attention of the government agencies and leading commercial enterprises. Already launched rocket will be probably become even a worse problem. Many spacecraft debris, bolts, lens caps, equipment covers, thermal blankets, even the paint on spacecraft has a tendency to erode in the harsh environment of space, creating a cosmic grid that now pales everything in orbit. Many of the objects released into space in the lowest orbits have fallen back to Earth. The upper atmosphere where the space shuttle flies gradually slows objects down. They re-enter the atmosphere and burn up within a few months or years. But a few hundred miles higher, the atmosphere is so thin that it is ineffective for cleanup. Spacecraft that are launched into orbits at this high will stay in space forever. Americans and Russians have been putting stuff up there for more than 30 years, where it was left until now. The explosion of European rocket produces more than 500 pieces of debris big enough to disable it. A spacecraft. Um, okay, Gosha, that's enough. You're partly right that there are a lot of problems, but if there is a problem, then there is a solution. And let me introduce you some of the ideas being proposed for cleaning up space debris. First of all, it is giant lasers. Using high powered pulse lasers based on Earth to create plasma jets on space debris could cause them to slow down slightly and to then re-enter and either burn up in the atmosphere or to fall into the oceans. Uh, the method is called laser orbital debris and it wouldn't require a new technology to be developed. It would use laser technology that has been around for 15 years. It would be relatively cheap and readily available, but the biggest hitch is <coughs> that uh, adding more, um, sorry, uh, other than adding more litter to the ocean, an uh, estimated price of uh, one million dollars per tech. Yes, this idea came to USA brains. In the USA, meanwhile, scientists came to give a problem not less spectacular like in the Hollywood blockbuster and aspect of us farm gun by sparrows. Um, USA Space Agency NASA is the one for methodology for the stuff of waste located on the Earth's orbit by firing the laser located at the International Space Station. Um, making such procedure is over by fiber optic laser system. It will be able to keep track of trying to enter in the Earth's atmosphere and burn unwatched objects. Um, okay, nice. So this solution is uh, suitable for large debris, but I have another one solution. 
Uh, for example, Space Balloons. It is the gossamer orbit levering device, original D system. It uses an ultra thin balloon, thinner than a plastic sandwich bag. Can you imagine this? And uh, which is inflated with gas to the uh, size of a football field and then attached to large pieces of space debris. Uh, the GLD balloon will increase the drag of objects enough so that the space junk will enter the Earth's atmosphere and burn up. Uh, if uh, the system works, it could speed up the reentry of some objects from a couple hundred years to just a few months. And the second one, it is wall of water. It is the idea for cleaning up space junk uh, is to launch rockets full of water into space. The rockets would release their payload to create a wall of water that orbiting junk would bump into, slow down and fall out of orbit. The ballistic orbital removal system is said to be able to be put into action inexpensively by launching water on the commissioned missiles. These solutions are quite far from reality. Yes, but there are those which have a right to exist. Uh, for example, uh, space garbage tray, uh, trucks. Uh, the U.S. Defense Advanced Research Project Agency is investing in the Electrodynamic Debris Eliminator, or EDD, a space garbage truck equipped with 200 giant nets which could be extended out to scoop up space garbage. And uh, another one, uh, it is recycling satellites. Um, Instead of just trashing space debris, uh, some dead satellites could be mined by other satellites for usable components. Uh, uh, this program could create new technology to enable harvesting of some available components from satellites in so-called graveyard orbits. And uh, this program would work to devise nanosatellites that would be cheaper to launch and that could essentially complete their own construction by latching onto an existing satellite in a graveyard orbit and using the parts it needs. Okay, Nasha, it's very interesting. But uh, have you ever heard uh, Kessler syndrome? Who knows about it? Kessler syndrome. Maybe someone No? Okay. <laughs> Okay, I'll tell you about, more about it. In the 1970s, Kessler showed uh, mathematically that once a certain amount of mass, uh, known as the critical mass, is put into a particular orbit, collision or cascading begins even if no more objects are launched into orbit. Originally dismissed as a mathematical fantasy, Kessler's prediction is on the verge of coming true. In the most popular orbit, Kessler said, if we not at all the critical mass, we are pretty close to it. Once collusion cascading begins, the number of objects in particular orbit will gradually increase, and the risk to satellite and manned spacecraft will rise accordingly. A team of researchers in Italy has calculated that enough objects are already presented in two popular orbits, about 600 miles and 1,000 miles overhead, for cascading to begin. By the time the cascades have run their course, in a hundred years or so, even small spacecraft will suffer damaging collusion after just a few years in orbit. This is only a projection, they say. But if we keep putting objects into orbit as we have been, operation will not be possible anymore. Uh, back then, NASA employee Donald Kessler, together with his colleague Burton Corpola, proposed that as uh, the number of satellites rose, uh, so would the risk of uh, accidental collisions. Uh, the resulting debris would take up further satellites, sparking a chain reaction that would swiftly encircle the planet, and uh, then the orbits would uh, become unusable because uh, anything placed up there would be sandblasted into smithereens, exacerbating the problem. Eventually, our access to space would be lost. So why aren't we launching satellites to clean up the space? Uh, firstly, it is sensitive politically because um, a satellite, even a defunct one, uh, remains the property of uh, people who launched it. So you can just uh, pull the satellite uh, out of the sky. Uh, secondly, uh, there is a military part uh, to all of this. Uh, if you have capability to uh, remove a dead satellite, to push it out of the orbit, 
then you can you could use the same method to take down a life one. Um, this is not a legal, political, and military program. Uh, work is proceeding at the various space agencies around the world, notably as uh, ESA's uh, Space Situational Awareness Program and um, independently at NASA's Orbital Debris Program Office. Uh, yes, and after the successful launch of the space vehicle Progress M27M into orbit, uh, the USA military found orbiting near 44 fragments, the origin of which remains unknown. It once again remind, reminded of the problem of space debris. Her human, humanity besought for a successful conquest of near-Earth space and outer reach of the solar system. Yes, guys, we heard about this, but we tell how we can keep with this, with it. And we wait for a decision not only cleans up the debris, but which also dispose of it in a meaningful and environmentally friendly way. And one of them is a Japanese project. Um, the Japanese project is uh, expected that the special satellite will be launched into orbit and deploy electrodynamic trial. This metal net, uh, 300 meters uh, in lead, 30 centimeters in width, a thickness of filament about one millimeter throw will move in orbit, generating a magnetic field and catching the small debris. After a few months, caught under the Earth's magnetic field, the influence, the net will change the orbit and enter the dense layers of atmosphere where it will burn. The project is pretty obvious, but the question is uh, whether such a lot of rubbish this draw gather. Indeed, in spacecraft, it supplies not so much materials that are magnetized generally, use non-magnetic alloys of aluminum, various insulated films, and more recently, the composite materials. Mm. And Lila, with friends from Tsinghua University in Beijing, China, offered a similar solution. The idea is to build uh, an engine capable of Converting the collected space debris in a rocket fuel, which will allow the machine to move and to maneuver in space freely, or at least as long as not gather all the rubbish. However, the details are much, much complicated. In particular, the process of turning waste into useful plasma is not an easy task. Lee and the company decided to focus their attention on space debris fragments with a diameter lead less than 10 centimeters, which allows the gun is unable to destroy. The idea is to catch parents of waste using a special mesh and then send them in so-called ball mill is a rotating cylinder, partially filled with anti balls which gradually green to power powder debris coat. Okay, Nastya, and what about our country? Because it's well known that contribute to the creation of space debris in other countries. China 40%, USA 27.0%, Russia 25.0% and other countries 7%. Mm, yes, uh, in September 2014, the Moscow Aviation Institute and some others reported their plans to, to create a conference uh, about the development of new type of say, a space system, a robotic satellite clusters. Uh, Russia's largest aerospace corporation, Energy, is involved in the development of clusters. Satellite cluster is a new concept based on uh, the use of small satellites with up uh, to one with half kilograms um, cube sites. I think everyone remember Wally. It's something similar. <laughs> Mm, such devices are cheap and can be launched into space in large groups. For example, spaceflight company using Russian rocket Soyuz and Dnipro launched CubeSats into orbit in just $125,000, while the launch of the satellite went in 50 kilograms would cost $1.75 million. So guys, can we convince you that it's not all so scary as it seems? Okay, you are right. Thank you. Maybe some questions about uh, this problem or 
Any other questions? Can you tell us about a lot of various uh, ways to solve this problem and to which one is the most suitable up to your mind? Mm. So, um, I was thinking ab about this issue and um, for me it is uh, um, consist um, sorry it is um, um, for uh, large pieces of debris it is uh, one uh, solution for uh, small pieces of debris it is the another uh, solution for example Nasty told about uh, the laser gun it is uh, the best solution for uh, large pieces of debris and uh, for example if we um, um, if we will talk about the uh, Japanese electrodynamic net uh, it is uh, most suitable for um, small pieces of debris because um, this net can um, slow down these pieces um, so and using these methods how long will it take us to solve this problem um, first of all we must think what uh, we will choose um, because uh, you see a lot of various uh, uh, things people think and people do and uh, for every thing it must have time not 10 years uh, and not 100 because we must do it as fast as we can because uh, we have progressed and uh, uh, we send to space a lot of uh, vehicles every year, every time and uh, we won't stop this. Uh, so I think in the next 50 years uh, I think we will catch uh, more dangerous. But don't forget that uh, satellites uh, just turn off and uh, some countries trying to, uh, try to destroy this and um, debris is flying everywhere and sometimes they are so small that uh, mm, they have they, uh, mm, uh, they have give, uh, give uh, for vehicles a lot of damages and uh, <laughs> everything in our hands because all these projects are not finished yet. So 10 years maybe uh, to finish this project plus uh, 3 years to build something, for example, laser gun. Um, and after that we will start. Um, uh, yes, guys say that uh, um, uh, Progress 27M uh, have uh, damaged it. And uh, um, when some satellites came back uh, in their front uh, windows, uh, so big uh, damages that uh, um, in the flight, in the space, it just can uh, <laughs> destroy and uh, if people will say they will die, of course. So, uh, as last well, gun, I think it's not the best idea because they just draw really big. But don't forget that these big pieces uh, form like small pieces, and these small pieces uh, just uh, falling, uh, falling that these uh, satellites and these vehicles and damaging their electrical. System and it's of course it, uh, after that vehicle um, will crash. Okay, any other questions? Mm -hmm. Okay, so thank you so much. Thank you so much for this.